Hello, and I'm absolutely delighted uh, to welcome Pierre-Laurent Aymar to our series to talk about Beethoven. It's a huge honor talking to you. Thank you very, very much for joining. Um, so uh, Pierre-Laurent has just recorded the heroic variations and the Hammer Clavier, um, uh, significant works, and of course played uh, a lot of concertos, recorded concertos and the, and the fantasias. And so it's a huge honor again. I just want to repeat, I'm a huge admirer of your piano playing and uh, absolutely fantastic. So Pierre Laurent, uh, may I ask you um, what, uh, when it's hard to be, um, I guess it's a hard question for everyone, but what is the sound world of Beethoven for you? What, what, what is it? Is it more orchestral uh, works that you imagine when you play a piano sonata or is it some kind of imagery, vision that you have? Um, I find extraordinary how he uses the common language for being the most original uh, possible creator. Mm -hmm. uh, if you take the objects that he uses, this is really the most, very often, banal thing. But uh, in fact, his originality, his radicalism, in ID, and he, radic, radicalism as an architect makes that the pieces acquires an incredible, well, incredibly unique. And in fact, if you take into account the context in which he composed, are incredibly destabilizing. Mm -hmm. uh, they are most of the time the most unexpected things happening all the time and it seems that he wants to make something new with almost every piece and there are things that were completely new completely surprising completely unexpected happening all the time and i love that very much that somebody needed to change the world uh, so drastically Yes, but uh, I, I must say it's, um, you know, the, the, the Beethoven it really stands out, right, in terms of the colors and the, um, I think, uh, sort of the dynamics he uses. So for me, it's very interesting if you have any approach to his, this um, absolutely dramatic, uh, you know, dynamics. You have a, you know, triple pianissimo on one side and suddenly you have a, a fortissimo. So uh, it, it's in your head. So how do you prepare for it? Do you have a concept of that or you just just strictly follow the score and, and just it becomes you, it becomes the piece? No, of course not, <laughs> by chance. I mean, to speak about pure intuition, with such rich and complex music is, of course, a nonsense. Uh, you have to study carefully this extremely um, powerful architecture and see, for instance, uh, how he uses the different ideas. You say it for the simo pianissimo, this is true, but the dynamic um, underlines the ideas. And if he writes for the simo and for pianissimo most of the time, uh, this is for underlining the contrast being ideas and the fact that, for instance, he brings two very contrasting ideas mm -hmm. extremely close to each other to create a conflict. And you spoke from drama. Uh, this is the case. He's creating drama all the time by the way of manipulating and organizing contrasting ideas, I think. That, that, that's exactly what I think. And um, may I ask, so for you as the performer, you know, I mean, Beethoven presents many challenges, but what is the most enjoyable part for you in Beethoven and to play, in, you know, if we can summarize, and what is the most challenging aspect of Beethoven's music? Very strong impulsions mm -hmm. uh, that are alive through strong gestures, but that are composed together mm -hmm. on an incredibly achieved way. If you look at the sketches, you see how many times he has rewritten the same passage and you know how, which fight it was uh, to get the final result, a little bit like Ligeti in the 20th century. And at the end, you get also a music that can be everything, wild, sublime, uh, heroic, 
uh, incredibly simple, very trivial, etc., etc., all possible. But um, the way how these moments are composed together is so strong. The, the power of the architect is so immense that you can't resist to the composition. You are completely taken, catched by it, caught by it. And this is as challenging as enjoyable. <laughs> As challenging as what? As as... Enjoyable, enjoyable. Yes, absolutely. Um, I think this is why he has so much success. Because in fact, he's a big thinker. Uh, you know, he's a philosopher composing music somewhere, but also so radical, so direct, um, and so communicati communicative mm -hmm. that in fact, it's done for every possible audience. Yes, the, from the less to the most educated, <laughs> I would say. And in fact, that's an interesting aspect. Why does he speak to so many people? If you look at the pieces, uh, this complexity is done with extremely simple objects. Yes, yes. Uh, the themes of Beethoven are done with two, three notes and seeing in principle, incredibly simple. Everybody can remember uh, to them and whistle them <laughs> in uh, another shower if you want. But all what they contain in them, there is so much potential, thematic, uh, thematic potential, development potential, um, so much sense that in fact this can uh, then be the basis for building uh, cathedrals. Yes, yes, incredible. Um, and I, I, I really share this passion with you because I can see there is so passion coming, so much passion coming from you. You know, when you talk about Beethoven, and I think Beethoven is very, very passionate. Um, you know, it requires a of passion. It can't be just, uh, uh, you know, taken for granted and simply. So may I ask you, so if you take, um, let's say you recorded recently Hammer Clavier Sonata. So, um, was it a piece you played before and, you know, you developed the concept over that or um, was it something that, um, you know, you just felt I would like to play it and learned recently? Uh, it's a piece that always fascinated me when I was a very young pianist, a teenager. It was played very seldom. Nowadays it's a bestseller and it's the... <laughs> Well, every young pianist who wants to get respect has to play this composition. I make exaggerating, but it's this kind of piece, unfortunately. Uh, in fact, it's compositionally such a challenge, and for us, for the comprehension, such a challenge. Um, it's hard to conceive that a human being uh, can dare to approach it or, uh, or to play it simply. And anyway, to solve all the problems of interpretation. But, well, the stage is done for trying the impossible, of course. So I tried to touch Hammer Clavier when I was a teenager. I touched the first movement and then I thought, okay, wait. And I wait until I was 50, I think, at the moment, when I thought, well, maybe you can understand a little more. And then I made some tries and then I started five or eight years later, a couple of times, and then started again later on. And well, you have still to have good muscles for playing it, for playing the fugue. So I thought now with 63, well, however, try one time. And um, this recording has been a challenge, of course, because this kind of piece is really challenging <laughs> the universe <laughs> and um, or it's the man the story of the man challenging the universe if you want and I well we planned the recording I don't know four five or six times and I pushed it every time postponed it in different holes different circumstances in fact because you know um, climbing Mount Everest seems to me to be a big challenge, even if nowadays, well, thousands of people do it as yeah. I would climb uh, one floor of stairs. Um, but, well, 
yes, we are here for trying. <laughs> I I am I'm, I'm sure, but may, may I ask you? So, um, just the the way you would approach, a, let's say, a new Beethoven sonata. So that's very very interesting. I mean, um, how do you start working on a Beethoven sonata? I think the approach to any work is always different. I learned that with new music, and I think it's the case with any music, especially. Um, with pieces from a composer who renewed himself so much. And I think we are surprised to discover that the strategy changes every time. Of course, there is not one system for approaching a piece of art. It would mean that each of them is done on the same recipe. Um, it would be a nonsense, in my opinion. So I can't tell you exactly. And it depends, of course, on your own history with a piece as a listener as a music reader, as a book reader. Uh, um, it depends on the kind of information you have got. Unfortunately, with Beethoven sonatas, they are so overplayed most of the time. You have got a lot of listening information, and I don't see why most of it would be the most acute and the most sensible. Because in life, in any profession, uh, there is a big amount of things done and a small amount of uh, highest quality, yeah. especially of sensible quality. So I think the first thing is to have an independent judgment for making independent choices mm -hmm. that would give no account to a kind of collective memory mm -hmm. that is made with the best and the worst yes. and a mix of it most of the time. Yes, yes, I fully agree. But uh, uh, may I ask, just out of interest, any practical? <laughs> I know, but any practicalities? If whether you, um, you know, work without the score at some point of the, you know, of the work, whether you'd, um, you know, sight it, read, sight read it completely from from the beginning to the end, and then work on certain challenges. Whether you work page by page, like Richter, you know, famously he didn't go to the next page before he learned one. So, so any any from those. You know, it's always a mix because playing music is a complex thing that is made from many parameters. And you work at the end on all these parameters together uh, as a synthesis, a synthesis. But you work on some parameters and some moments um, well, with, with a priority, let's say. So if the parameter is, for instance, to try to understand where is the ID in the composition, because Beethoven is not somebody that you take, you can take by the sonority. Yes, he was not an acoustician par excellence. Mm -hmm. uh, he's not also, let's say, I don't know, a, a polyphonist or the best of them. Mm -hmm. uh, he uses polyphony and on a brilliant, uh, strong personal way, but he's not really one of the finest technicians for that. And so, but he's a man of reflection and incredible originality in musical ideas. So, one of the questions, first questions could be, what is the specific compositional ID in this or that piece? And this is a matter of observation, diagnosis, and at the end, a certain, in a certain way, inspiration. Mm -hmm. And... I was discussing with a friend, a painter recently, and asked her, she's a marvelous abstract painter, and asked her, but how do you get the, the essence of each new painting? And does it come by painting? Does it come by discipline? Does it come? And she said, I never know really, but recently it very often happened uh, during my insomnias. And suddenly I woke up at three o'clock in the morning and then I had to paint because this is the only way to solve my problems. And so to say, in fact, the question is always how to harmonize profound uh, and authentic intuition with handwork. How will you really 
try to realize completely until the last point an intuition that you hope to be right. Yeah, yeah, fascinating. It, it really is. And I, I think there is uh, just so, so much to it. And, uh, but may I ask you, so um, if you have any plans for the future to do all of the sonatas, uh, I mean, uh, you know, many now say, you know, I now tackle a cycle. So what is the relationship with the cycle of the sonatas for you? Uh, well, the 32 piano sonatas are not a cycle. So for me, there would be no reasons for playing all of them, mm -hmm. apart of if you want to give a musicological or a biographical look, mm -hmm. uh, um, a compositional landscape mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. view on the creator's activity. But then I think nowadays you should have it with some more information, musicological information, comments, uh, something that can nourish this presentation. I mean, mm -hmm. 50 years ago, or when Schnabel did that, or when Brendel did that, there were moments where we didn't live every season uh, in each city with three integrals of the 32 sonatas, like we had in, uh, in the Beethoven year, thousands of the nine symphonies by Beethoven. Why? I mean, uh, everybody knows them. Uh, what would be interesting, I think, is to present this music with the perspectives that can enlighten it on certain dimensions. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, the way to integrate some traditions for Beethoven or the way to explain more uh, through a clever uh, programmatic proposition the cultural context in which these sonatas were composed, or the way how Beethoven was a prophet for the future. I mean, there are a lot of ways to present a certain reflection on these masterpieces, and maybe on all of them, why not? But not simply to deliver the package, what is for me more a kind of Guinness Book demonstration of I'm able to. Yes. That's very interesting, a really very, very interesting uh, approach. Um, and, um, you know, one of my final questions, if you don't mind, um, you know, it, I, and it sounds very cheesy, but maybe you have personal favorites of the Beethoven music. I don't say one, but maybe there is something that's really close to your heart that you particularly sort of love. And if you can say why, that would be just wonderful. Uh, I will tell you, first of all, if an opus is so rich, there are many of pieces and these changes because um, uh, the pieces you need to be nourished by changes uh, connected with the, the, the different needs in your life, the different moments of your life, mm -hmm. the different happinesses or crises in your life. Um, Second of all, somewhere, my favorite piece is not something I want to share with anybody or not with an audience. It's not a public thing, you know. Yeah. If I'm really a professional um, interpreter, I hope to be convincing enough so that each piece I interpret should be taken like my favorite. Yes, of course. You know? Yes. And um, the other thing is very, very private. But at the end, um, what will it be if it is some parts of some symphonies or some parts of some string quartets or uh, some parts of um, sub-vocal music? Or, um, you know, I think it's more than a piece. It's really this mix for me of uncorruptible fight um, in his composition, what we see in the sketches and what we feel at each, each bar of, uh, of his music, 
and of immaculate vision, you know, the humanist embracing the universe, uh, the, the overwhelming messages of hopeless and, uh, and total, um, uh, total belief in the, in the universe. Uh, I'm, I find this mix uh, extraordinary and you can find it on many different ways in many different pieces. So this is more this specificity, this kind of portrait of Beethoven that I'm looking for than, rather than a specific piece. Sure, 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 sure. That's very, very interesting. And look, um, it's, it's been amazing to just, um, you know, get a glimpse of your Beethoven's world. Uh, thank you very, very much for sharing. Um, and thank you very much for coming and talking to us. Uh, so, yeah, thank you again. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for doing thank, it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you.